everyone! So today I'm here to review the Bite Beauty Mix and Mingle Luminous Creme Lipstick Duos. They individually retail for $14 US, $17 in Canada, and contain two lipsticks that are 0.05 ounces each. It is said to be a lip duo collection with six limited edition holiday pairings in a moisture-rich double-ended lipstick with complementary shades for the season. Breaking down the cost of a full-size lipstick and doing the math, each duo is a $16 US or $19 Canadian value. But with all that said, last year's duos cost $2 less than this year's. So while you're still getting a good deal, it's not as much as a value as it used to be. The packaging is a matte double-ended tube with a silicone texture, and the lipsticks themselves have a citrus herb type scent. It's not overpowering and it can't be tasted. Each cap features the name of the shade, which my biggest concern is accidentally mixing them up and confusing shades. As I've said every time I have reviewed these, I really like the idea behind a double sided design. It's much more convenient than individual little tubes, but I wish that you did have the option to pop them apart in the middle to mix and match shades to create your own custom combination duo lipstick. It's not that big of a deal, but would have been a cool little extra if you owned more than one. Pepper is a medium muted rose brown with warm undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. It had a creamy texture that glided on easily without tugging or dragging on lips, but I found that the pigmentation did have a slight transparency to it. Pepper lasted five hours before fading. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Cortado was darker and more plum. Bite Beauty's Rosewood was similar, and Urban Decay's Streak was brighter and more pink. Cafe is a light to medium pink with neutral undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. The creamy texture made it comfortable to wear, but the lighter nature of this particular shade sometimes very lightly accentuated the look of lip lines or any imperfections on the lips. Cafe wore well for four and a half hours before fading. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Cafe, it's a different formula. I promise was similar, and Max Please Me was cooler and more pink. Latte is a medium muted brown with hints of pink, warm undertones, and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. The creamy consistency glided on easily, and it was comfortable throughout wear. Latte lasted five hours before fading. In comparison, ColourPop's Parker was similar but less pink, and Max Kinda Sexy was lighter and more peach. Cortado is a medium to dark muted dust rose with warm undertones and a luminous cream finish. It is also the shade I currently have on today. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. When I first put this shade on, I felt that it had much more slip to it than any of the other shades in this formula, but it did eventually dry down, so to speak, and it never feathered or bled. Cortado wore well for five and a half hours before fading. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Pepper was lighter and more brown. Kat Von D's Double Dare was muted and matte and the Sephora collection Marvelous Mauve was more gray and muted. Confection is a medium brightened fuchsia pink with cool undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and had rich opaque pigmentation in a single swipe. It was comfortable throughout wear, lightly hydrating, and didn't bleed or feather. Confection wore well for six and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Violet was cooler and more purple. Max Pink Pigeon was warmer and more pink. And the Sephora Collection Whipped Blush was more vivid and matte. Marmalade is a medium brightened tangerine red with warm undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly and had excellent color payoff. Once again, it glided on easily without dragging on the lips, was lightly hydrating and never feathered or bled. Marmalade lasted seven hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Kat Von D's Gold Blooded was darker and more red, and Ciate's Risqué was brighter, more orange and matte. Pomegranate is a medium to dark cherry red with warm undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. The color glided on easily, was lightly hydrating and left behind a stain. Pomegranate wore well for six hours before fading. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Tannin was similar but a tad darker. Clinique's Cherry Pop was darker and cooler. And Marc Jacobs' Dashing was warmer and more red. Palomino is a medium to dark vivid fuchsia red with warm undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and had opaque color payoff. Once again, it glided on easily, was lightly hydrating, and left behind a stain. 
Palomino wore well for six and a half hours before fading. In comparison, ColourPop's Cougar was warmer and more pink. Marc Jacobs' Blow was darker and more purple. And the Too Faced Melted Berry was warmer. Holly is a medium to dark tomato red with warm undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and had rich opaque pigmentation. It was lightly hydrating, the color never feathered, and it had a slight slip which made it comfortable on the lips. Holly lasted six and a half hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Candied Maple was warmer and more orange. Kat Von D's Gold Blooded was warmer and more orange. And the Sephora Collection Always Red was warmer and matte. Tannin is a medium to dark poppy red with cool undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. While it did have nice pigmentation, I felt that my natural pigmentation did show through slightly in some areas, but this never caused the product to look uneven on the lips. Tannin wore well for six hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Pomegranate was warmer, and Clinique's Cherry Pop was brighter and more blue-toned. Scarlet is a medium to dark burgundy with warm undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, mostly even, and semi-opaque. It had a rather slippery consistency to it, which caused the color to look darker around the edges and towards lip lines. The formula was lightly hydrating, but it did look streaky on a closer inspection. Scarlet lasted five hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Clinique's Berry Pop was lighter and warmer. Mulberry is a medium to dark berry red with cool undertones and a luminous cream finish. This shade applied smoothly, evenly, and mostly opaque. It had nice pigmentation, glided on easily, and it was lightly hydrating throughout wear. Though on a closer inspection, I did feel as though it was a tad bit lighter in certain areas. Mulberry lasted six hours and left behind a stain. In comparison, Bite Beauty's Aubergine was warmer. Max Rebel was cooler and more magenta. Marc Jacobs' Boy Gorgeous was brighter and more plum. And NARS Scarlet Empress was lighter and less opaque. So overall, these are really handy duo lipsticks and they come in a great variety of festive shades. The idea of two lipsticks in one makes it a really great way to try the formula out without committing to a full size tube. And plus, they're super convenient for use on the go. Just throw it in your makeup bag and you'll always have it. And even if you want, you can have a daytime and a nighttime shade. You can switch it up. So whether you're planning on gifting these or picking them up for yourself, then they are definitely worth checking out and I highly recommend them. So be sure to let me know in the comments below if you are planning to pick them up or if you've tried the Luminous Creme lipstick formula before and what your thoughts are on it. As always, don't forget to check out my blog for more details, photos, and swatches, as well as like, comment, and subscribe to show your support. If you'd like to give me a follow, I will have all of my social media listed here, as well as down in the description. As I always say, I hope you found this review helpful, and I hope that you're having a fantastic day, and thank you so much for watching.